Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Session Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education in Love series. In the face in my resistance to truth presentation, Jesus encourages us to go through the process of emotionally removing from ourselves our own resistance to truth, whether it be feeling the truth of our personal emotions or our emotional resistance to accepting God's truth. Recorded on the 23rd of February 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. So the topic of this discussion, as I said, I've changed things around. This was going to be tomorrow morning, but I'm doing it now. M facing my resistance to truth. So we've also already talked about the faith issue. So I'm just going to write that here. You can see that faith is a, a very important quality and we, we want to uh, obviously develop faith rather than try to resist it <laughs> rather than try to ignore it we want to develop it but now what we're doing is focusing on the matter of truth now you can see that with truth it's a very similar equation can you see it straight away why do we resist truth because we don't want to feel something it's exactly the same problem we don't want to feel and so what we do is we choose to resist the truth now, this replies in particular, and I'll just uh, extend this to God's truth. Now, God knows the truth about your life. God knows the truth about your childhood. God knows the truth about every experience you've ever had. In fact, God knows the truth far better than you probably at this point in time do. And to be frank with you, a lot of spirits know the truth about your own life far more than you do right at this moment. You're not a very good reliable indicator about the truth of what's happened in your life. Why aren't you? Because you want to avoid the emotional pain. That's why you're not a reliable indicator of what's happened to your life. Because your goal is to not remember the things that are painful so that you don't have to feel the things that are painful. That's your goal. Truth dictates that you remember everything, that you remember even the things that are painful. That's what truth dictates. But, but you don't want truth because if you have truth then you remember a whole heap of painful things that you don't want to experience and, the, and, and you were taught as a child to not experience. Many of us when we started to feel some emotional pain as children and particularly of, of most of your generation you got violently abused when you started to feel some of the pain. So there, there's another motivator, right? Is... I start feeling some emotional pain and then on top of the emotional pain I get a whole heap of physical pain to reinforce the fact that I shouldn't feel my emotional pain. Right. Then on top of that, the, with the generation today, with the way that parents are bringing up children now, it's often quite opposite in the sense that, that parents give them everything without any limitations and without any restrictions, without any desire for them to consider what's going on for the rest of the world. And so what happens is that children grow up with these expectations that are unrealistic. And then when something's taken away from them, they react in a violently angry manner because of it. That's another way we don't want the truth. We don't want the truth of some of our expectations are unrealistic and are unloving. Some of the things we're demanding of other people are just unrealistic and unloving. And we don't want to come to terms with that particular truth. So what we do is we create a whole heap of resistance to truth. What's the resistance to truth that we create? What do we do? Can you see it's almost the same as... So let's go Sheridan over here, if that's all right, if you still remember what you were going to say. No, you're right. No, that's all right. Who was over here? Oh, Pete, thanks. <coughs> we think we already know the truth. We do, so that's one of the things we do. 
So we arrogantly believe, is probably a good way of saying it, isn't it? We arrogantly believe believe yep anything else joy Yvonne thanks um, in order to accept God's truth I'm going to have to release my truth that the errors that are inside of me all right so what 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 do we what should we call my truth what's the what it like the term my truth is a misnomer isn't it yes right so false beliefs right so my truth is really <coughs> false beliefs mostly right at this stage because it, we know we know this must be the true because we've got all this pain and suffering and and it's going on not only for us but also the whole world so even though all of us believe the same things that a lot of them must be false right so you could say they're false well our beliefs are expectations aren't they appearing real to us So, so what is my truth, really? Fears. Ah. Yes, fear. So my truth is really fear. And when you think about it, isn't that pretty close to reality? We, you remember the other day we asked you, why do, don't you want to change? And what, what came up was just what? A whole heap of fears. Fear after fear after fear after fear. A lot of things have not even happened to you. you you're still afraid of them. Like, you, you know, you think about it. How many of you ladies are afraid of being raped? Don't be afraid of being raped. Okay. Majority of you, right? Okay. How many of you have actually been raped? Right. So there's a lot less, right? So, so, so the fear of the things that have happened for, to other people get imposed upon us. So there's got to be something going on there where there's, where there's an allowance of these emotions to enter us, right? Yeah. Now for some of you, though it's happened in the future, it doesn't mean it's going to happen again. Not necessarily, does it? Right? And if you had released the pain of it, then who knows it will happen at all, right? Most people have not experimented with that, have they? Right? So, so in the most cases, my truth is actually, and I, I find it very interesting, the New Age movement just loves those two words, right? My truth, your truth. Oh, we're all, we can all be different with their truth. You know, there's no such thing as absolute truth. Right? God's truth is absolute truth. Absolute truth. Right? And we are terrified of absolute truth. We are. We don't want absolute truth. Why don't we want absolute truth? Die things. Um, because I'll have to face the truth and the, the emotional pain inside me um, yeah. well there, there's going to be a difference between my truth and God's truth is there not what what what's the difference going to dictate that I've got a that I'll have to change exactly that, that you're going to have to take some action of some kind to bring your truth into harmony with God's truth do you want to do that no most of us don't so, so we don't want to know that there's a, anything such as absolute truth. Because if there is, then it requires us, it really is going to motivate us to take some actions which we don't want to take, we're scared of taking them. So, so what do we do? We either deny there's absolute truth by having a whole set of beliefs 
which says there's no such thing as absolute truth, you know, there's your truth, there's my truth, and all of those kind of belief systems. Or we think we already know what the truth is. Or we deny it because we're trying to shut down some emotional experiences of our own pro uh, through, through the process. So we're doing the same as what we're doing with faith. We're basically saying it's a bad thing to have some faith and it's a bad thing to have some truth. And that's how you guys treat me pretty much most of the time. That it's a bad thing when I say some truth to you. It's a bad thing. A lot of you are very argumentative when it comes to receiving any truth. You want to have a fight about it. You do. Right. And do I want to fight with you about it? No, I don't. So sometimes when you put up your hand, I can feel, yeah, you want to have a fight about this. I don't want to answer you. Go and have your fight with somebody else. <laughs> right? I don't have to waste my time fighting with people who want to resist truth because they have emotional reasons for doing so. Acknowledge that you have emotional reasons for doing so, you see. So, so what I notice is that most people are doing the same with faith and the same with truth. They are not thinking that they can develop it. They are not positive about developing it. It's completely the opposite. With faith, they don't want to develop it. They don't want to have any trust in God. They don't want to have any trust in God's goodness. They don't want to have any faith in God's laws or anything because it means that it's going to require a number of things of them. One of them is to feel a whole set of emotions they don't want to feel. In other words, to feel pain. And, and then another one is that it's going to require actions from them that they don't want to take. It's going to require change in their life that they don't wish to be involved in. And so it's a lot easier to say, no, that's not true. So, so why is it that the majority of people who come to seminars like it when somebody else is told the truth? <laughs> this is the same reason. Oh, yeah, I can recognise the truth being told to them. Yeah, that seems, makes sense to me. I've got complete faith in that. But when the truth is told to me, no, he's got it wrong there, right? Now, if it's like that with me, how worse do you think it's going to be with God? Like, I don't know all the truth. But God does. So, so, and you're fighting me most of the time. So, so who do you think you're going to be fighting God less or more? Probably more, right? He's got more truth to share with you. And it's going to be very emotional because it, it'll be a contrast between what you currently know. It's going to be emotional. It's going to require change. It's going to require action. It's going to require you making decisions and choices. And it's going to, those decisions and choices are going to sometimes be quite a lot of upheaval in your life. What are you going to do? Well, what you've decided to do is go, I don't want to hear it. If I don't hear it, then I don't have to do anything about it. All right? Share it. And then Laura up the back. I had an experience yesterday when, like, the first day I think I was telling myself it was impossible to receive God's love. Yeah. And you said, well, no, how do you feel about giving love? And yesterday when I contemplated that, there was just so much emotion straight away and I got to see all of these things. Yeah. And so I had the experience that, truth is really amazing and cut lots of things out yeah but i'm obviously telling myself a lot of lies a lot of the time yeah like things like it's impossible to receive god's love which is completely untrue yeah and facing that i block it so how can i become better at being more truthful with yourself to, with myself yeah well that's a will-based choice yeah it's no there's no trick to it <laughs> So I don't need you to... <laughs> no, no, you, you don't need any... Like, you've got God. God can tell you the truth of anything, right? You've got the law of attraction, God's laws, law of cause and effect, law of attraction, law of compensation. They're all telling you the truth, all of them. So you don't need anything more than what God's already giving you, right? It's helpful if there's somebody to tell you the truth, but you don't need anything other than what God's already given you to tell you the truth. What you've got to do is learn how to be open to receiving the truth. And that's a will-based desire that has to be developed in you to want the truth rather than fighting it, you see. 
And not, what I see is the majority of people want to fight it. They want to fight it. And they've got all these emotional reasons why they want to fight it. But, but two of the biggest reasons are they just don't want to feel any pain and they don't want to take any action. They are the two biggest reasons why we fight truth. Does that make sense? So, so if you are finding you don't know the truth about it, something, it's probably one of those two things that is causing you to not know the truth. I felt like after, you know, reflecting on it yesterday that I'm probably not being very sincere at looking at my law of attraction. Like I like to skip over a lot of things to not feel... Whose law of attraction? God's. God's law of attraction, yeah, good. And you were not being sincere looking at it, I agree. Mm. Yep, and this is where 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 on on uh, a couple of days time we're going to talk about this pain pleasure thing, because we're we're very desensitized to the pain of what all of these laws are bringing us: the law of compensation, the law of attraction, the law of cause and effect. This bringing us a whole heap of results which we're unwilling to examine and feel about because if we did we'd probably want to take a different action but we don't want to take a different action so so we're automatically shutting it down so see what what i notice most people doing is you know we've talked a lot about emotions and and it's necessary to talk a lot about emotions however i see the majority of people choosing to not feel choosing to not listen to truth choosing to not have any faith and choosing to not act Right now, they are will based decisions, and there's nothing anybody can do except you to change that will based decision. Yep, and that applies to this issue with truth. There's nothing anybody else around you can do to, to change your will based decision. There's got to be an internal thing that goes and says, Hang on a sec, truth is to my benefit, just like faith is to my benefit. Emotions are to my benefit. Action is to my benefit. I am, and that's notwithstanding the benefit of other people, because it's also for that as well. But, but once we understand that basic principle, then it's highly likely we would go, okay, I am personally going to benefit. The people around me are going to benefit by me engaging these four things and doing it because I want to rather than because I feel like somebody's forcing me into it or kicking me into it or pressurizing me or threatening me into it, right? And this is what God would like to see of us all. God would like to see that we voluntarily through, and not only just volunteer, we desire to feel, work our way through to these points where we actually want to have faith, where we want to have truth, where we want to take action and where we want to feel. Right. It was it was very exciting to discover because I have this belief that emotions are hard to feel, but I've realised they're not. They're just there if you're truthful. Exactly. And that that was quite exciting. Yes, and it's a very important truth to understand that emotions will be felt if you are open to truth. Right. The reason why I asked you the question in the previous presentation as to why the majority of you cry when I say some things to you in a in a seminar or privately, when 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 you're sitting by yourself and you you think about things, you don't cry at all. And the main reason is I'm telling you the truth about your life. That's why you cry. I'm telling you the truth about something that you don't want to tell you the truth about. Right. And that's why you let yourself connect with that and cry and in that moment i also am encouraging you to feel because my feelings from me are you're allowed to feel you're allowed to cry so i'm not trying to say i'm going i'm not going to tell you all the whole heap of things and then try to shut your crying down right and so that whereas whereas you're concerned because you're trying to shut your crying down so so you don't want to hear the truth because it might make have an emotional response that you feel that you can't handle can't cope with right so can you see it's a, it's a very tricky situation really what's coming what's coming first <laughs> like is it the emotional childhood damage that's coming first and this is the reason why all these problems occur or is it the fact that you've just made some four basic decisions you've made a decision to not have any faith you've made a decision and some of that's from your childhood, as, you know, there's motivations from your childhood, but you're an adult now, you can make a different decision. 
have, you've made a decision to not have faith, you've made a decision to not hear truth or feel about truth, you've made a decision to not take any action in your life, you want other people to do it for you or not to do it at all or not to take responsibility and you've made a decision to not feel any emotional pain. You follow? So aren't decisions the exercise of your will? Of course they are. Can you choose differently? Of course you can. Can you choose differently even though you have a whole slew of uh, you know, emotional damage from childhood? Yes, you can. So, so stop using that as an excuse to not choose differently. Stop using what's happened to you as an excuse to ignore these particular basic, basic principles of your development in love. And what I'm suggesting to you is you're not going to get any education in love unless you do this. That's what I'm suggesting. Unless you have a desire for faith, a desire for truth, a desire to take action and a desire to feel, you will not get an education in love. You won't know anything more than you currently know if you keep doing the same thing. You've got to change these aspects of yourself and that is your decision. That is your choice. No one else can make that choice for you. God won't. Other people will try, but they shouldn't, right? And anyone who loves you certainly wouldn't make a choice for you. Right? It's a choice that needs to be made for yourself. Okay, so our resistance to God's truth is driven by the exact same emotions and feelings or similar emotions and feelings as our resistance to faith is driven. So when you think about that, it's like, ah, oh, it's all getting pretty simple now. All it is is, I just don't want to do it because I don't want to feel a few things, right? I don't want to change. I don't want to act. That's why I do it. There's no other reason, right? And when it becomes that simple, it goes, okay, all I have to do if I really want to progress is have some faith, listen to truth, Look at, you know, and listen to truth, feel truth for yourself, feel faith, like nobody else can develop your faith, it's yours, right? Your truth, which is really what? Fear, has to be confronted, has to be confronted somehow. How are you going to do that? You're going to have to accept God's truth about things before the fear will disappear, because the fear can easily disappear once I understand the truth about something. So, so, so instead of saying, I'm afraid, that's why I'm not doing it, I go, fear can be released. Fear is my false beliefs being expressed and, and expected by myself. All right? If I expected God's truth instead, then I'd have a lot less fear. But how is this fear going to come out of me? Well, obviously I'm going to have to confront this fear to come out of me somehow instead of just living in it. So I, there's actions I can take there. And what I like about the exercise of will, and, th and this is why it is the very first thing that must be learnt by any person who wants to, to have a relationship with God, is, is because it's all your will under your control and it's simple. And that's what I love about God's truth. Everything about it is so simple. It's just so simple. Renee, thanks. Um, I thought um, after after the question that you you posed, have we changed in the last five years? I um, would have to say that definitely not. I've not changed. Yep. Um, and I thought my concern is that I've been using thinking and thinking that I'm choosing just to create everything else over my will. Yep. And I'm can I'm just wondering I haven't really given it much thought in how to do things differently yet, but just wondering if you could give any tips on how not to completely create another facade. Yeah, we we're, we're going to work on that on on the two days after these two days. The the last two days. 
we're going to focus our attention on right let's go back to some of the basics about developing our will how do we go about developing our will rather than engaging this willpower thing that we often want to get into and and you know we're going to discuss those particular points again and have a lot of uh, have a couple of q and a's on that particular subject as well so rather than get sort of into it now we'll leave that particular discussion if you can remember that question we'll and raise it it'll probably it'll probably be be uh, the third presentation on the on that day Ra raise it in the q and a there and we can make have some discussion about it is that right yes. is there any other thing that you'd like to Thanks, Lily. Um, with the fear that we create through our false beliefs, through our resistance to faith and our resistance to truth, yep. Um, I'm just wondering, by taking action, is it the case that you kind of don't actually just kind of have to sit and feel all your fear? If you just kind of teach yourself by taking actions, you have new experiences, and that kind of dissipates the fear as well as feeling it if you see what i mean correct correct because a lot of our fear is based on beliefs rather than the things that have actually happened to us so we just have to have some experiences where it doesn't happen and then we've taught ourselves something better yeah which is much easier yeah but don't you're still going to have to <laughs> process the emotion of terror at some point yeah because all of you have it in you so so the emotion of terror has to be felt at some point anyway so so you choose to do both you, you take action and you feel whatever you feel through the process, right? Rather than saying, okay, I'm just going to take action and avoid all that terror anyway. That's just another alternative to, to not processing through the terror. Yeah. Remember, remember the fear, uh, a lot of the fear is emotional, right? It comes from learnt experiences during your childhood through, through the family of origin. It's all a lot of them emotional experiences emotional experiences that have been locked up inside of you that they're, they're frozen they're like frozen emotion it's like someone's put that emotion in a snap snap you know freezer and then put it inside of you basically every time you were prevented from feeling an emotion to its end you froze it now that frozen emotion dictates a lot of your actions right now and a lot of your thoughts so you're going to have to feel that emotion at some point right so, so, but the way you do it is by taking some action, confront the emotion and let the emotion come up when it comes up. Listen to the truth. Let that confront the emotion. Take some action. Have some faith. Let that confront the emotion. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm just wondering if the fear that we're creating by continuing to lie to ourselves yes. is different in nature from that frozen fear. It completely is. The fear you're creating by lying to yourself is not an emotional experience. It's a, it's a justification to prevent the emotional experience. Right. So it's completely different. Right. And it's not what I would classify as real fear. It's just the justification to prevent the previous emotional experience from being completed. Okay, that makes sense. And that's why when you act, those kind of fears can just go bang, 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 all gone really rapidly because they, you don't even have to feel those. You just have to act differently and learn something different, right? Yep. yep. Thanks. Good. Yep. Um, if we go next door to you, next to you. Next hour. Getting back to when you went to the supermarket, uh, to the shopping centre and you felt your fear. Yep. Um, when I felt little bits of terror, I'm completely out of control, like screaming and my body, whatever. You, you wouldn't do that at the, at the shopping mall, would you? Probably not, no. It's, it's carrying it on. Mind you, I don't see any point in the future if there was a whole group of people who are used to this where, where that wouldn't be a, that be a problem. It's just because of the amount of reaction that would occur and what would potentially happen to you as a result of that reaction that I would re recommend coming against to take it. take me away. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But it's maintaining that. <coughs> Until you've got a space to do it, and that's um, difficult. That's quite easy, though, Alan. If you if you put yourself back in the position with your imagination, you can do you can connect to a lot of things. So the key the key is where you feel the emotion come up, and you realise, oh, this this is not a safe environment to feel this particular emotion at this particular time. Then as soon as you go to a place that is a safe place to feel that a particular emotion you just allow yourself to, to place yourself back into that same place that you were just at does that make sense 
that caused the trigger. And I've done that heaps of time with you guys. Like there's, uh, there's a barrage of emotions coming from most of you <laughs> when I'm talking. And sometimes what I've got to do is go home because it's not safe to me to deal with all of it here. I go home. I, I put myself back in the situation, let myself refill those particular emotions and then process whatever I need to process as a result. Can't do that, but I, if I wake up in the morning and feel fear, I haven't done this for a while, um, um, I can just go and do it then. But if there's this time lapse, I just don't seem to be able to do that process. So take some actions that will trigger what you know you're afraid of and then see what happens. Take some actions in a situation that's safer to feel them. Mm. Do I just follow? don't connect to that, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> just, my mind just goes blank. And, and no, see, see, whenever we talk about fear, most of your minds go blank. Mm. It's like in a daze, you know. And the reason why that happens is because we're talking about fear. And when, when you're contemplating actually feeling terror or fear, most of you don't have, most of your, your desire is, that, is to avoid it. And so instantly there's no thought. It's like, it like gets back to what I was saying about the connection between the soul and the mind, right? The soul is saying, don't feel fear, don't feel fear, screaming at you, don't feel fear. Even if I'm talking about fear, your mind's doing this, right? So, so, what, so, sorry, your soul's doing that. So what's your mind going to go? Don't feel it. Oh, I didn't hear that. Can I hear that again? Oh, I didn't hear that again either. <laughs> you know, this is how, and this is what you do. You don't hear things. How many of you have listened to presentations and said, oh, I had no, I was there and I didn't even remember that. <laughs> Everyone, right. And this is the reason why, because... Because there's a whole heap of things that are going on inside of us emotionally that prevent us for, to even pre prevent our mind from even working under the circumstance. Do you follow? Right. That, and, and it is driven by the soul's emotion. So, so when that happens, you know, ah, oh, there's a lot of fear. I'm, I'm very afraid here of something. And, and you're going to have to settle with that for a period of time. You're going to have to allow yourself to attempt to access that emotionally but we'll talk about the emotions tomorrow morning more Thanks. yes yep straight behind rita <coughs> i want to ask about emotions when i was a teenager or a young adult i read theresia von avila and john of the cross those books and they describe the emotions when they connect to god or to jesus like a lover and they were yearning and uh, is that real or is that a false belief? So I am afraid. I thought, oh my God, I don't want to be like that. So I lived in the 16th century and they are uh, Catholic mystics. Yeah, see, so I, I think we get way off topic there, Rita. So Sorry. can I, <laughs> I'd love to answer that question another time, but, but we're way off topic now. I want to focus on this issue of God's truth rather than focusing on any other thing if we can. Right. So Rachel, Sorry. here we go. Um, I just had a question about fear. What about the fears that are imposed upon you by your family, by your environment? Your, your environment. Yep. How do you deal with those fears? Do you just feel how unloving that feels and the sin that it is, or does it become if you don't believe in it necessarily, but feel it? And how do you decipher? If you're getting projections from family that you don't personally believe, then I'd suggest that the fear that's being projected at you is not the fear associated with what they're saying, but rather your fear of being in disharmony with your family. Do you follow? Yes. So, so, so the reality is you're not necessarily afraid of what they're talking about. You're afraid of the emotions that are coming from them and how those emotions will change you or motivate you or affect your life. Right? So that's where you need to go. Right? So, so this is where a lot of God's truth will help you because quite often I see people focusing on things that are happening without really understanding the full truth of what's going on in the moment. Like The reality is the majority of us get a lot of projections from other people to stop growing that's why we've stopped growing right and whenever you challenge the status quo 
the majority of people who are in the status quo will attempt to stop you from growing. That's their fear being expressed. They then express this fear to you, but that triggers a different kind of fear in you. The fear in you is, if I'm not with the status quo, then people are going to attack me and harm me and my life might get harmed. So there's the fear. And that's the fear that affects you a lot, Rachel, isn't it? Not the fear, well, not what they're saying to you, but rather the attitude they have towards you while they're saying those things to you. Yep. And that's the thing to feel about. Okay, Pierre. When doing the, the homework uh, yesterday, I had uh, this realization that uh, basically I want to remain unloving and I don't want to take action just because I don't want to feel my pain and my fear. That everything came back to that. Yeah. And now I see I don't want God truth for the same reason. Yep. And I don't want oh everything, the all the all the reason comes back to I don't want to feel my pain, my fear. Yeah. So I felt like So can you see oh, how simple it's it is? Simple. <laughs> yeah. So I felt there is hope because I need to concentrate on this one, yeah. and if I can get through this one, then all the rest will be easier. Yeah, see, see this is the thing I noticed for a lot of you, is that you're, you know, you're at psychoanalyzing yourself so much, and it's very complicated, a lot of the psychoanalysis you're doing. And some of it you're quite good at, right? But, but it's still very complicated. But it skips over some very basic things. And what it skips over in particular is how much we want to avoid pain, personally, and how much we want to live in fear because fear to us is true. We want to live in it. And anything that confronts that state, we reject. Anything. And we're not realising that. And so here we are trying to, you know, it's almost like sometimes I see some of you, you're almost trying to, you're trying to do a university course about God's, God's love and truth and, and swatting up and everything, not realising that in your heart, the reality is you don't want to hear any of it. <laughs> and then you're wondering why it's so hard to understand, right? It's hard to understand because there's this resistance internally, emotionally, and all we've got to do is focus on the resistance with our will and we can work our way through it, right? If we do that, then we'll understand all the other things quite easily, in fact. In fact, in fact, a little child can understand them, so we'll certainly understand them. We're an adult, right? Most of us. <laughs> so it gives, it gives hope because yeah. I felt it's not fear of action, it's fear what I'm going to feel as a result, as a result. Of my, yeah, that's a real thing. And if I, I can uh, open to being humble, yeah. then no problem. Exactly. No, just, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And this is where I would like to introduce the concept of humility again to you. So you, what is the concept of humility? Can you remember? Because we've gone through that many times before, but what, what is its concept? Yep, so we go to Kel, Kel, Kel over... Yep, just leave your hand up, Kel. Uh, feeling all of my emotions, uh, painful emotions and pleasure emotions at any time. Yes, and? As, uh, as well as that? So that, that's a key part of it, right? As well as that, if we come to Katie. Passionately desiring to do it. Yeah, so, so it's not just uh, unwillingly doing it, <laughs> which, which is where most of us are, right? <laughs> We're just going, oh, I've got another emotion. Oh. But, but rather being passionate. But it's also passionately receiving, desiring to receive some, some truth that's above your own awareness and knowledge, isn't it? Because, it? because it's no good just processing emotion without having received something more in the process. And a humble person is willing to receive truth as well. So, so it's about passionately feeling and experiencing all of my emotions, whether they be painful and pleasurable, and accepting God's truth 
at every single moment is being humble. <coughs> you follow? So that's what being humble is. Now, if, if we think about humility, it's a key thing in this process. As Pierre points out, like the main reason why we're not progressing is because we just don't want to do some basic things. Some just basic things, that's all. And, and I see people doing that all the time, all the time, not wanting to do these very, very basic things and then hoping for progress. And, and in some ways it feels to me like you're almost beating your head against a brick wall sometimes and, that, and you do feel like you are, don't you, a lot of times. And the reason why is because you'd prefer to do it. <laughs> Seems a bit crazy, doesn't it? But you'd prefer to do it because that's less painful than actually doing the other, which is feeling the emotional pain and also working your way through your fears and confronting all your fears and taking action and feeling it emotionally. So, so this is the problem is that we, we can't expect to grow under those circumstances. We can't expect to grow. Okay, so uh, a few things I'd like to mention. Um, yeah, let, let's ask a series of questions. And we could ask the same series of questions for faith, just as we could ask the same series of questions for, you know, truth. We can ask the same series of questions for actions and we can ask the same series of questions for emotions. Right? Now, we've noted down some of those questions in your outlines. So you'll notice that they're there. So what are some of the questions that we need to ask about any one of these things? So we go to Will. Will him down there. <coughs> how do I personally feel about them yes but let's be more specific if you have a look at uh, page 3 of facing my resistance to truth right down the bottom near the end if you've, those of you who have got that uh, outline with you let's ask them those questions shall we Thanks, Linda. What actions do I take daily to challenge my opinions? Yes. So with faith, we could ask, what actions do I take daily to challenge my lack of faith or to grow my faith? With emotions, we could say, what actions do I take daily to fill my emotions? With, ac with uh, truth, we could say, what actions do I take daily to confront my own false beliefs, my personal opinions, which mostly, as we've talked about, are false beliefs. Simple question, but if you look at the actions you take daily to do it, what do you find? See, most people live in their comfort zones, right? And, and if you're honest with yourself, you'll find that you live in your comfort zone pretty much 24 by 7, and therefore don't take actions to confront these particular things right and this is a problem if you want to grow in your understanding we're going to have to confront these basic problems that we have regarding truth faith emotion and action we're going to just have to confront them we're going to have to do something about them and the only and if every single day we're not doing anything about them then of course no change is possible right so so there needs to be some kind of plan or activity taken on a daily basis to do something about these particular things right now i notice that many of you plan your life very much when it comes to like buying a car or buying a house or you know less so with your relationships perhaps but more about the physical choices you make particularly your financial choices but when it comes to the choices you're making daily to confront these belief systems that are false and so forth, uh, I don't see too many making choices in that regard. So, so that, that's a measure of how much desire there is, isn't it? 
So, you know, you can convince yourself you've got desire that you don't really have. You're far better off saying, obviously, if I look. And remember, right back in 2014, the very first talk I gave the morning of that, of that uh, assistance group was all about measuring progress, right? And most of us don't do it. We don't measure progress. And one way to measure progress is go, okay, every day do I do something about this particular issue which is of supreme importance to my future development forever, not just now on earth. It's a, like a forever thing. It's, it's like even after I pass, it's just something that I could be doing. So it's very good to learn all of these different things, isn't it, that we could be doing even after we pass. It means that half of what we do doesn't get thrown out with the bathwater when we pass, right? And, and instead we spend a lot of our time not working now towards our eternal future, which is where we need to, what we need to be doing if we ever want to be happy. So that question is a, a really important question. What's the next one in that list? We come down to Barbara and then we come across to Wayne. What action do I take daily to accept God's truth? Yes, yeah, so, so what do you do each day to actually come to accept things that you know are probably true from God's perspective, but from your perspective, they're not true. What, what do you do to confront your belief systems, your fears, with regard to those particular things, your false beliefs? What, what, have you, what are you doing each day? Right? So, so give an example of that. For example, this is the kind of thing you can do. You know inside of yourself that you don't trust many people. Right? What can you do to confront this particular problem? You, you, can't, you can't put yourself trusting someone who's untrustworthy, can you? That wouldn't be very <laughs> good. That would just be causing even more damage, wouldn't it? Right? So you need to find somebody who you feel over many years have proven that they will do things that they say they'll do. You need to find someone in that boat and then have some interactions with them, don't you? where you can come to trust the person and what they're saying to you, where you actually put yourself in, at risk and confront that belief. If you don't do that, how are you ever going to learn to have some trust in anybody? You're not, probably. You'll live alone. You remember Glenn, the man we channeled? Live alone. Didn't trust women, lived alone. That's why he lived alone, because he couldn't trust women. He couldn't do anything in his daily life to confront the fear, the false beliefs he had about it. He didn't do anything to release them emotionally, and so he just couldn't, he couldn't trust women at all. He couldn't, he couldn't let himself have a relationship, so he died not having one. That's how you live 20, 20 30, 40 years in the same place, by not confronting not doing something so what's our next one are you right for the next one Wayne? what actions do i take daily to experiment with god's truth yes so do you treat god's truth like an experimentation process and what do you do each day to like, even if it was just one thing in a day you just go okay today i'm going to experiment with the law of attraction today i'm going to experiment with feeling my emotions and seeing what happens Today I'm going to experiment with telling the truth to my wife or my husband. Right. So what I'm going to do all day is she will ask me something, she'll say something to me and I'll say the truth about how I feel the whole time, the whole day, just see what happens. Right. What we do, like these are things we can do, right? The, the, we, we, it's choices we can do. To, to, to confront these particular things. What's the next one? If we just go across to Zoe. <coughs> what actions do I take daily to follow God's way? Yes, yeah, so what, what are the things that I do? I know that God's way involves being humble, feeling some truth, and opening myself to love, so, and, and, and learning how to use my will in a loving manner, so I know all that. So what things have I done today to live in harmony with God's way. So you can do things like, okay, today I'm going to plan to help somebody, but I'll only do it if I feel like I really, really want to. And then at the end of the day when you've helped nobody, you go, okay, I didn't really want to, 
Okay, so the next day, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at why I don't want to help anybody. <laughs> All right. What's the feeling I have when I, when I notice something, somebody needs help? What's the feeling I have that causes me to not want to help them? It's now, it's now living my life a bit more in, in harmony, isn't it, with developing that particular, through that particular issue. You're allowed to feel like you don't want to do things, right? That's what will's all about, isn't it? You're allowed to choose, yes, I do want to do something, or no, I don't want to do something. You're allowed to choose either way. But if it's out of harmony with love, wouldn't it make some sense to work you know, to acknowledge, well, yeah, it's probably not very loving. Like, I noticed, I noticed someone's house burning down over there, but I didn't help him out <laughs> at all, right? I just thought, yeah, let it burn to the ground, that's no worries. And, 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 and so, obviously, there's a lack of love in me about that particular issue. So, so what would be causing it? Allow yourself to find out what that might be. Right. Have the goal of eventually getting to God's way, but at the same time not having judgment about your own way. You follow? Yeah. What's the next one? Is there a next one? Can I read it? <laughs> sure, you can, Zoe. Yeah. What actions do I take daily to experience everything emotionally? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a key question. Like, so what, what are you doing on a daily basis to make sure that you both have the time, the energy, and the desire and the resources and, and you're in the right position to feel some things emotionally rather than just sort of, you know, run around trying to fix everything up or deal with everything that happens in the day. What, what, do, you do, how, what do you do and how are you going to plan the day so that, so that if something does happen, you're going to actually feel something rather than just avoid it? Right. Good question, isn't it? Like, okay. I found I challenged this from, you know, challenging a lot of addictions of running around, you know, being with people in addictions and shopping and eating and all yeah. of those things. So now I've spend a lot more time by myself at home yeah. and I want to reflect and spend more time to just feel how I feel. Yeah. Um, but I feel that I've gone into fear and I'm in avoidance now of going out. Yeah, exactly. You can become a, what's that, agrofo <laughs> agoraphobic? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, hmm. I mean, I still interact in the world but not much. I'm, I, I'm in a lot of avoidance and fear of... Yeah. Going out. So, so you've got to balance it with okay. I need my time to feel, and I need and I need my time to interact because yes. the, the interaction time creates a whole heap of events, which then I could choose to feel about. Yes. You follow me? Yes. It's no good just isolating yourself. Mm. Like, and this is why I said in the first surgery, you can live in the world without being of the world. So you know, I encourage people to live in the world, not, not, not be recluses of, from society, because mm. that, that does you no good at all. You need, you need to be in the world. It will help you work your way through quite a lot of things if you're in the world, doing things all the time, engaging processes all the time, engaging activities all the time. But, but you also need to construct a life where you can, once you're triggered with some emotional feeling, that you can actually go and feel it rather than having, it sh having to shut it down, yeah. don't you? So, you? so you need to create your life like that. Now, for some of you who work sort of 40 hours a week, that might be quite hard, but I used to do it by, um, at, at one point I was working 60 hours a week or 70 hours a week doing this. What I would do is in the mornings from, from 6 to 7, I used to firstly uh, read either the pageant messages or RJ Lee, some, something that will open me up, and then I'd start praying. So the whole time I'm working, I'm praying, and, and then whenever I was triggered at something, I'd just go out the car and deal with it in the car and then come back. Now, I had my own business at the time, so, so I could do that. But if you're working for someone else, then you've got break times, lunch time. There's all sorts of times that you can work your way through different things if you choose to, but you've got to create the environment to do it, don't you? Yeah. But that's your will. That's completely under control of your will. So, so everything's under the control of your will <laughs> in the end, isn't it? Yeah. So no. I, I actually... Um have chosen to start doing some technology and with the 
DT clips yeah. at home. I thought I have a lot of time. I'd like to, yeah. you know, be of service and practice that and learn about that. And I'm, uh, I'm all over the place with it. I'm in a lot of fear about it. That yeah. I, you know, I'm going to make mistakes, but I'm, I'm going through that. And I've so the emotions into, start coming up. Exactly. And I've <laughs> gone into the bedroom and cried and cried. I'm like, you know, I can't do this technology thing. Yeah. And so I have started to, uh, yeah. to do that, which is So is that's good. great. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you need to do. That's, that's a part of the confrontational process of growth. The, the key is don't, don't become a recluse, don't remove yourself from society, because if you do such a thing, in the end, um, mind you, the law of attraction is still going to work, isn't it? So you're still going to have events that cause injuries or, or other things, you know, insects will bite you, other things will happen, there's all sorts of things that will happen. But, but obviously you, you want to maximise your benefit to the earth as well while you're doing all of this. So you, you want to engage some positive loving activities, whether they be loving towards yourself or loving towards others, and then you want to be able to be in a position where you can work your way through whatever happens emotionally. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's very good, guys. Like, I feel you're starting to get the idea that actually you can see how much your will has an effect on these choices and decisions rather than the childhood emotions. All right. So a lot of you have been thinking, oh, it's the childhood emotions that have an effect on a lot of these things. But actually, the first thing is your will that has the primary effect on these things. All right. So, so we need to see our will being experienced here. We've looked at our will with regard to faith and God's truth. So what we're going to do after the break is we're going to do some Q&A about the, the issue of faith and Q&A about the issue of truth. It will just be half an hour for each one. And then we'll, right at the end of today, we'll be looking at taking action as a, as a, you know, what do we do? Why don't we take action as well? And you'll see, again, the pattern's getting established so already you can guess, can't you, what, where we're headed with action and how, uh, why we don't do that, right? So, so what we're hoping to achieve over these two days of our looking at facing, you know, my resistance to love and change is to actually see that it's quite simple why we resist love and change. It's quite simple. And all it requires is some basic you, ex um, ex exercising of our will our, not our willpower, our will, our soul-based will, to change it. That's all it takes. And so, so, you know, when we do the lists, you know, we're afraid of this, afraid of that, afraid of this, afraid of that, afraid of this. And when we start realising, oh, hang on a sec, I'm just using this fear as an excuse to not do something about it. Then we go, oh, hang on a sec, maybe, maybe I'll feel my fear if I actually did something about it, rather than the other way around, just sit here and try to feel fear, never getting anywhere. Right? And this is what we want to explain to you through this process, is that, is that actually progress can be quite simple. It's challenging, but it's quite simple to understand, and you don't have to get bogged down in the details so much, because the details will come up once you do these four basic things. They will automatically come up. Okay, so we'll leave it there, and uh, we'll see you at, um, I think it's uh, 2 o'clock, isn't it? Is, it, is that right? Yeah, two o'clock.